What's up, boys and girls, ladies and gents? My name is Matt, this is Hidden Light, and today we're gonna do something a little strange to some of you, uh, but it's good for Mother Earth, and that's all that matters. We're gonna try and reuse disposable cameras. They say they're disposable, but some of them can be reused uh, like an infinite number of times, or many times, anyway. So uh, I'm obviously a supreme expert in this, and I know everything about it, and I've been doing it for decades. Um, but Taylor's gonna do all the work instead, because I have no idea how to load or reload a disposable. So uh, welcome, Taylor Mahoney, printer and camera reloader extraordinaire. Uh, hey, man. Hey, well, <laughs> let's... Um, Okay. You, you're tall, so yeah, maybe I'll you could. See. That's okay. Yeah, that might that's, be a little better for everybody involved here. I, look yeah. at this. <laughs> Him sitting is basically me standing. That's ridiculous. Oh, well, that's okay. So, how do you? Uh, which can you reload every disposable? Maybe that's a good question to start. That is with. a good place to start with. Um, generally, disposables are disposable, which is kind of the unfortunate part. Uh, you have all of this plastic, there's a battery, there's a little capacitor, a flash, all of this junk that pretty much goes in the trash every single time you use it, which is uh, in today's world kind of, I think we're moving away from that, hopefully. Um, but some of them can be reloaded, uh, not all of them. The one uh, underwater housings, pretty much you have to break open to open them. Uh, I found the Fuji ones to not be very user serviceable. Um, and a bunch of the other generics and things you might find around, not so great. The ones I have found, though, that tend to work are the Kodak ones. Some of them look like this is the newer style one, this is the little older style one. They're the same, um, but the Kodak ones can generally be fixed. Um, so what you want to do is when you're shooting your uh, disposable is make sure you finish the roll of film and you'll know it's finished when you can just freewheel forever and ever and ever and ever. And then all you know that all the film's all done, right? Okay. Um, if you're gonna do this yourself, you need to take the film out before you bring it to your lab. Uh, most labs are probably not gonna take your request to save your disposable because it does take extra suffering to open them. Um, but, but we would. We if would. If you bring us your disposable and you want it back, that's fine. Yeah, I'll, as long as it's the kind that I can reuse, I'll totally do that for you, no problem, that's fine. Um, but what you gotta do is finish the roll, See if it's a Kodak one. You peel the sticker all the way off of it because you got to get to the guts underneath here. And this one I've already done that too. Um, you're gonna need a couple of little tools. I have like a little nail file thing. Uh, this is a like a Leatherman one. Oh, thanks. I'm not used to this. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> me neither. The top down is hard. Top down's hard. Yeah. But I have this little nail file thing. It works really good. It's real small and pointy. And you're gonna need like a flat blade screwdriver, a little bigger one. But anyway. To get the camera open, it's right down in here. Um, on this side, there's a little tab. You can kind of get it in there and pop one side of the camera off. Oh! oh. Yeah, there it goes. <laughs> but you can all imagine what that I... looks like. Yeah, it's gone. We don't need it, it's fine. It doesn't matter, but you take that to your lab and you uh, keep the rest for yourself. Um, <clears throat> the next thing you need to do is pop this little battery compartment open. There's actually an arrow that tells you which way to do it. It slides open and just pops right out of there. There's a little battery here, just a double A. You can replace that if you want, just runs the flash. It's not really necessary for anything. The delicate part here, and the reason that so many of these are disposable, and uh, or why you wouldn't be able to reuse one, is uh, having to fix up these little plastic tabs, which if they break, you're basically out of luck. So uh, anyway, I take my little nail file, and I just kinda gently persuade them open Gently. See, that's why I could never do this. There's, there's no gently in my vocabulary. <laughs> well, in, honestly though, like you're gonna break these and that'll be the end of it. But if you get even one more use out of it, it's better than nothing. But once you've released all three tabs, um, the back should just come right off and expose the inside of the camera. Uh, it looks just like pretty much any other camera you'd see anywhere. Piece of cake. Piece of cake. Um, now, you want to load the film in it. Um, I recommend, you can shoot color, black and white, doesn't matter. I would recommend you shoot 400 or 800 or more. Uh, most of these things come preloaded with 800 speed film. Your light is your friend. These have no settings, no shutter speeds. Like, if you're gonna put 400 in it, you might push it to 800 or more, tell your lab. Um, that's my advice. Totally. So for this one, we're gonna put Kent Muir 400. We'll probably push it to stop, but we'll figure that out later. 
but start by opening your pack of film up. Just like you'd expect. Keep doing that. Yes, I, I love it. Okay, so <laughs> this is not quite as simple as loading any old camera. Unfortunately, the take-up spool, I don't know if you can see this on the thing, but the take-up spool doesn't really grab the film very well. Um, and you have to kind of hold it in there and then put the whole camera back together and then start winding it. And so the goal is we're gonna put film in the cassette, or put the film in, mm -hmm. pull the leader across, mm -hmm. put the camera back together, mm -hmm. and then you have to wind all of the film out of the cassette. Yeah, so these things work kind of differently. Um, so the way point and shoots work is that the film sits in here and then all, all of the unexposed film sits on the other side of the camera. And as you shoot and as you wind this thing, it pulls the film back into the cassette. Perfect. Um, there's this little gear right here that stops it from freewheeling until the film's gone, which is how you know you're done. Perfect. So, eh. so you gotta like put the whole camera back together and then pray that you held tension correctly and then maybe it works. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a suffer fest actually. And the first couple times you do it, you're gonna have to start all over and do the whole thing again. It's just the nature of it. It's kind of a pain, but once you kind of get the finesse of it, it's not so bad. And it's like a free camera because you already paid for it. And it's like a free camera because you already paid for it. Um, but okay, let's just do it. So you take your film, you pull it in here, and you pull the leader across as best you can. Let's see if I can get this thing in here. Yeah. There is a little notch right here. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but there is a little notch right here where you can uh, stick the tip of the film and catch it on one of the sprockets. So you kind of want to, as best you can, do that and kind of pull. Oh, yeah, You nice. see that, that kind of hooked right there? Right. And you kind of pull it over. And what's, what it's going to want to do is come undone on you, but you got to just hold a little tension on the winding spool here. I use my thumb or something. Put a little tension. And kind of hold it in place. Uh, then you want to carefully, very carefully, snap, start snapping the camera back together, right? while holding tension on that spool. If you're careful, if you're careful, it'll be fine. And then the battery cover goes back on. All while still holding tension. All while still holding tension. And then it's not light tight until this little piece goes on the bottom here. And that just snaps back into place. And you kind of check it, make sure everything's snapped together. And that's when your screwdriver comes in handy. You're gonna stick this, there's a little slot down in there. It's not, there's probably a specialty tool that's made for this, and if you could find one, that'd be better, but this works. And then you just start winding it up. You can hear that it's making windy noises, and I can feel a little tension on the spool. That's good. If it had popped out, which is gonna happen the first time you try this, um, it'll just freewheel and it won't have any tension. It won't make any windy noises. So it won't clicky windy noise probably if it's not rolling. If it's not rolling. If you're hearing that sound, that sound, it's going good. Sounds kind of crunchy. It does. But, but okay, so, so then you get to a point where it starts making a different noise. It's a terrible noise. That's just the camera telling you it, it lies. Don't believe it. It's fine. It likes it. It likes it. It's it, truly. It's fine. This is a horrible sound. I know. It's not breaking. It's not doing it wrong. It's we great. are. We are. Yeah. It's fine. It's everything's fine. This is fine. Just go. Just get through it. Yep. Yeah. Keep going. Okay. It's supposed to do that. Your power drill. Well, I mean. My arm's like a power drill. Your arm is like a power drill. I think Ansel Adams said that. I think Ansel Adams said that yeah. too. There's a lot of it. It takes a while. You gotta do 30 Oh, okay. And when you get to the end of your roll, there'll be a little more tension on it. Don't crank too hard, just like normal, because you'll rip it out of the cassette. But you'll get to the end. I've reached the end of the roll. It's obvious. Perfect. At that point, flip it over and wind back a frame or so until the camera cocks the shutter and gets itself together, right? That's it. And now you're ready to go. The only trick is that the frame counters on these things only go to 27 because these things come loaded with 27 exposures. We just put 36 in it. So 
the frame counter means nothing. The, you just shoot and shoot and shoot until the thing freewheels. Like for example, so I take a picture and then, and it locks in place. When the film is done, it will just spin forever. So even if you load it with 24 or a bulk rolled 12, it doesn't matter how many you give it, once it freewheels, you're done. Yep, that's it. And then you can either pull the film back out like you did before and process it yourself or send it to your lab or just give the whole camera to your lab. Absolutely. You don't want to deal with all that again. Absolutely, 100%. It's that easy. Um, like I said, light's your friend. Um, it's not, you know, uh, try to get 800 speed if you can. Color black and white doesn't matter. Get experimental and, though, you know? And you can use these, I mean, as long as you don't break them, you can use them as, number, as many times as you want because the battery is replaceable. Yeah, the battery is replaceable and that's, it only runs the flash. The camera itself is mechanical. So these are theoretically infinite, re, infinitely reusable. Even if you broke the tabs, if you were so inclined, a little gaff tape or something could hold this thing together really good. Sweet. Um, I think, I'm not positive, the uh, Ilford used to make ones that were clear and see-through and you can see the guts in them. Um, and I think those are reloadable. So if you find one of those, save them, they're cool. Uh, but anyway, I don't know, that's it. How long did that take us? Like 15 minutes? Something like that, 10 minutes? If you didn't want to go through all that, you could just buy a camera that's designed to be reused instead. Uh, but these are cool and they're way more hipster. I wonder if you could save the sticker and reapply it. Uh, that would be hard. That would be hard. Maybe you can have your own stickers made or just paint them up to look cool, like with markers or something. Totally. I don't know. Nice. Yeah. Well, thanks, cool. Tay. See you guys in the next one.